How many yes. musicians does so it take is... to figure out how to use the copy? <laughs> we know our fans really want to see the real side of Hailstorm. The, yeah, this Struggling is the part. with the dark this side. Dark the dark roast. And then you might have to edit this part. It's too, yeah. too hardcore for the fans. Yeah. Get on your knees and let the games be. So we literally were here a year ago today. Did the exact same day. I just figured to make it stick out a little more. Time to go, guys. This way, man. This way. <laughs> I'm lost! Where am I? I don't know you people! Alright, so it starts out the show with um, Love Bites. Yeah, with Love Bites. RJ is just gonna go out. One, two! One, two, one, two, three, go! It's quite interesting because the guys told me we had written a song for our new record called Miss Hyde. And it's funny because the guys turn to me and they're like, Lizzie, you are Miss Hyde. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. Don't listen what your girlfriend says. She reads those magazines that say you failed the test. You don't have what she needs. It's interesting to now look at it and embrace both of them. Lizzie's so funny because she is just a sweetheart. But when she gets on stage, man, it's like, Dr. Jekyll and Miss Hyde. I've actually had fans in line like are afraid to meet her because on stage she's so intimidating. She embodies this this superhero, you know, where she just she is woman <laughs> and she will roar. And um, off stage, she's a completely normal person. We wanted to play all new songs, and yeah, we're so excited to play them all. And then decided, well, I said, I nobody said, would have fun but us because I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody knows them. Nobody knows the songs. And then it would be like the whole record comes out on. Can we YouTube get the video. coffee to work, people? <laughs> Dying over here. Yeah. I don't want it to function like a we human being. We can go being. on stage and we can play in front of thousands of people and have it not be a problem. <laughs> But man, ask us to make coffee or do math and taxes. Whoa! Speaking of yourself, Rob. <laughs> I rule up my taxes. You know, every band has their own weird culture, you know, and we have a, a very odd one, I guess. It's different, you know, it's like such an interesting dynamic. It's this weird, wacky, you know, freak show of a circus that we have going on here. It's like the Partridge family meets Spinal Tap, we tell people all the time. You know, Lizzie and I are brother and sister. Hey, you! Hey! What's up, sis? Nerdy? Not in the morning, bro. Put it back. I don't really know too many people that are as good as those two kids for as young as they are. He and I have been doing this together since I was 13 and he was 10 years old. She just kills it every night with her vocals and he's fucking ridiculous, such a good drummer. RJ is like uh, the front man at the back of the stage, you know, it's hilarious watching people like this hot chick singing to you in a short skirt and they're doing this, which is fucking hilarious. That's mom in the back. Hello! Just in case, just in case you didn't get that memo. We really are just one big kind of crazy dysfunctional family that's funny, you know? <laughs> like not dysfunctional bad because they don't really fight very much. But um, they're a little dysfunctional in other ways. So. Hanging your sweaty ass pants around the bus is not working out for anybody anymore. My sweaty ass pants are what keeps the, the bus fueled and running. You drain that shit and you put it in a can. Welcome, babies. This is, this is called Innocence. That family vibe rubs off on everybody. Not just Lizzie and RJ, but. Joe and Josh as well. The crew, everybody. So meet Lenny. <laughs> our programmer on the record that we're taking out for these couple shows. Yeah. He's here to stuff. To rock out. Yeah. On his laptop. And his keyboard. Laptop musician. At the end of the set, Joe just comes up. Stage shot! Stage shot! I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I didn't even get my earpiece off. There's somewhere in the crowd, so. I've been too scared to tell Justin, so hopefully he doesn't find out until he sees this. Well, 
before we had Letty, I had to do all the sound effects with my mouth in the microphone. Like... <laughs> and of course, the 808. <gasps> First of all, they're on the t road like 300 days a year, which is insane. Yeah. But they do it. This is the only band I've ever seen, a national band, to come that has a family dynamic. Oh, I see you met my Uncle Rex. How you doing, <laughs> Uncle Rex? How you doing, you all right? The brother, the sister are playing, the mother's the tour manager. Paul Mana has just sent me a an email stating we are officially sold out for the show. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you know, occasionally my mom and I have role reversal because, you know, now that she's working for me, it's like, it's kind of strange having yeah. your mother work for you and then you have to tell her what to do. Having mom around kind of keeps me in line, you know, keeps me from making uh, life altering mistakes. Justin's enjoying his coffee. <laughs> Is it the only <laughs> chair left available? <laughs> That's the only chair available. Crowd of bus. Crowd of bus. <laughs> Good seat. All known. <laughs> Private room. Sanctuary. Yeah, come back here to get a, get a little peace and quiet. Uh, and then you got... What? <laughs> and then RJ. Pick up! We've tried to explain RJ to people and there just is no way to oh, explain no. it. It's just RJ. And that's the way it is. I think that and like saying that he's a, if David Lee Roth, an animal, had a baby, it'd be RJ, is probably the best way to yeah, describe RJ. We in the elevator, we in the elevator, we in the elevator, yeah, everybody, we in the elevator. <laughs> And this is also our first tour in, really, officially in a real bus. Yeah, we just got it uh, two days ago. Big difference. Although I will say that I will say that the RV that uh, we had did have four slide outs, so we would be able to play Twister in there. So no Twister this time. Got a back lounge this time. I mean, he chose the back lounge as opposed to the uh, extra bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't tell her about that. Otherwise, she'll be a diva and demand that on the next hey. bus, then we're out of a lounge. <laughs> I am not a diva. Yet. Yeah. Don't turn me into one. The first year we were here, it was literally hangover day. Everybody that came yeah, let's, was, um, let's do that. was either hungover or, well, or just still drunk from the night before. <laughs> Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Yeah. We're going to have fun tomorrow. We should all detox tonight. Detox tonight <laughs> so we can retox tomorrow. <laughs> I'm retoxing. Well, we're doing New Year's Eve in Allentown, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, oh. at the Croc Rock. That's one of those clubs that we literally grew up in that club. You know, they've known us since my brother and I were little pikes. Around this area, around like the East Coast area, is uh, where we got started. So all the fans that knew about us before we even had a record out are coming out to these shows. You don't know that I know. You watch me every night. It was fucking amazing, <laughs> as usual, for the 14th time in a row. This will be my 42nd show since 2005. I've been to uh, probably 45, 46. I've lost count. They're so personable with their fans. It's just a wonderful relationship. Yeah. They love us, we love them. They're a kick-ass band. I recommend seeing them any day. Let's and go. it helps the chick's really hot, too. <laughs> Lizzie signs way more boobs than we do. That's okay. I am okay with that. It's not quantity, it's quality. 
A lot of people flew in from Montana. Uh, we have people flying in from Glasgow. Oh, these guys drove 700 miles from Kentucky. 700 miles, and it was worth every minute. I came all the way from Cleveland. All the really dedicated, like diehard, devoted fans. I mean, I know everybody says it, but it's really true. I think that the Hailstorm fans are the best fans in the world. It blows my mind at how many people we actually know semi-personally. You know, we definitely work at it, and we want to know, you know, all these people. A couple other bands do it, but they're not as good to the fans as, as this band is. Just, they know everybody, they hang with everybody. It's funny, you know, they end up on the Boston, and, uh, they become part of the family too. They just want to be a part of it. They're just like, man, I, I want to, I want to get on the the, the free show bus and uh, and go. We want to have an intimate relationship with the people that are following us because it just makes it more fun for us. We welcome them with open arms. You know, we're just like, join the family. Let's make it the biggest, most crazy, dysfunctional circus of a family that we can make it. You know. Just go home right now Or maybe we could stick around For just one more drink We were just discussing upstairs If the Mayans are right We're so glad to be here with our new dad's name I love it, you know, I love the concept of, um, you know, you don't break up the family, you don't break up the band. I think that's that's what makes bands stand the test of time, is when they can, when you can't differentiate between who's your real family members and who's your extended family, almost. Families don't break up, they might get angry at each other, but they don't break up, you know. I feel like a lot of bands are just business arrangements, and it doesn't feel like that with this. It's been a long day, oh yeah, it's been a long four days, no, thanks been, for joining us. It's just been one us. long day that lasted four days. Hey, 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 oh, this is still got some. I know. Happy New Year, Hailstorm fans, see you in 2012. Year of the Storm! Here's to us.